Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel released a new Fantastic Four teaser with a bunch of clues about what they're doing for the actual movie, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. They're going to be adapting a couple really notable comic book arcs, particularly the coming of Galactus, the very first time he actually showed up in the Fantastic Four comics. But there's a couple more details about what's going on with Silver Surfer, the different versions of Silver Surfer in the movie, the different universes, and what's going on between Franklin Richards and Galactus and why he's so important to Galactus. A lot of people wondered if they would ever do Franklin Richards inside the movies. Turns out they're doing him in this first new Fantastic Four movie. There's actually a bit of a connection between the events of Deadpool and Wolverine, what's happening in that movie, and what's happening in the Fantastic Four movie, primarily the fact that they're multiverse-based movies, like they trade very heavily on the trope. I don't expect to see the new Fantastic Four characters in Deadpool and Wolverine. If we see Fantastic Four and Deadpool and Wolverine, it'll most likely be the Fox Marvel versions from the original Fantastic Four movies. There have already been a couple Fantastic Four Easter eggs that we've seen in the movie, but they're for a couple different versions of the Fantastic Four. But a little while ago, you may have seen Marvel actually dropped a big teaser for the Future Foundation in a bunch of the stories they wanted you to read to get ready for the movie, basically telling you what they're going to be doing in the next couple of years. There were a lot of theories about them doing Future Foundation at the end of Spider-Man Far From Home during Marvel Phase 3. Like, we're talking many years ago at this point. It's been a long time. You remember all the speculation about who had bought the Avengers Tower? There was the teaser at the end of the movie that was meant to be for the Fantastic Four. It was like a one, two, three, an invisible four for the Invisible Woman. All the different colors of the Fantastic Four characters. We can't wait to show you what comes next. Basically, Marvel Phase 4 teaser for the coming of the Fantastic Four eventually. Like, all the stuff that they had just gotten the rights back to. Because right before that movie came out, they had just completed, like, the actual legal completion of the Disney Fox buyout. Meaning that they got the characters back at Marvel, like the Fantastic Four, the X-Men characters, so they could start developing those movies again. So a lot of people are like, what if the Fantastic Four bought the Avengers Tower and they turned it into the Future Foundation? The funny thing is that now we actually learned that the Fantastic Four is going to be a multiverse version of the team. They're not going to be the ones that actually bought the building. That's actually going to be for the Thunderbolts movie in a more of a Dark Avengers kind of teaser. Totally different movie, but supposedly Val is going to be the person that bought the Avengers Tower, and it'll be a spin on Dark Avengers, like the Dark Parallel for the Avengers. And supposedly, early theory, that's where the asterisk is for in the Thunderbolts title, because they're going to change the name of the team to Dark Avengers eventually. And Val will have bought the original Avengers Tower, just moving them in. But if you're not a big comic book reader, the reason why Marvel would want you to think about Future Foundation, just because they're a really important group that Reed Richards eventually created in the comics, but it wasn't back during the classic comics that they're mostly telling you to read for the movie. This didn't happen until a little bit later. Reed Richards became disillusioned with the other scientific organizations on Earth, felt like they weren't doing enough, and the operating mission of this new organization he creates, called the Future Foundation, was to plan for a better future for all of humanity and Earth, essentially their motto, a better future, thus the name Future Foundation. Eventually it turned into a really big group, but typically when people think of Future Foundation, they think of Peter Parker, Spider-Man joining the team, getting his white Spider-Man suit. Dr. Dune joined the team after he was invited by Valeria and Nathaniel Richards, Reed Richards' father. If you're not a big comic book reader, the name Nathaniel Richards might pique your interest. Like, wait a minute, isn't that what Kang's original name was? That was his original human name that he was born with before he started calling himself Kang the Conqueror, and the other variants started calling them by their comic book names. Pretty much any variant of Kang from across the multiverse started life being called Nathaniel Richards. The really twisty connection, at least in the comics, is that Reed Richards' father was named Nathaniel Richards, and he had a couple different families in different time periods, and Kang comes from one of the other family lines that he started in the distant future. So the whole idea is that Reed Richards and Kang are loosely related. There was a lot of talk about this when they first introduced the Kang character a couple years ago during the Loki series. Just because Marvel is swerving so hard on Kang, like we're still doing Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty, and it seems like trying to move past Kang as fast as possible, the Council of Kangs, so at least now I'm not expecting them to dig too deeply into the connection between Reed Richards and Kang. But one of the other important connections is the Council of Reeds and the Council of Kangs. So the whole idea is that the Council of Kangs basically stole the idea of creating a multiverse group from Reed Richards and the Council of Reeds. Most of Kang's technology is actually borrowed or stolen from earlier versions that other Marvel characters created, like his time travel technology started life being based on Doctor Doom's time travel platform. He just took that and used his advanced technology from the distant future to make it better. So no surprise that they would crib the idea for the Council of Reeds from Reed Richards and his variants. 
getting the whole Galactus of it all, too, to talk about Franklin Richards. Franklin Richards is supposed to show up in the movie, but he's going to be born during the events of the movie. They're going to change his origin a little bit. Like, he's supposed to be born in outer space, but they're supposed to set up the connection between him and Galactus. This will be part of a long-running plot that Marvel's just developing in this movie. Like, it'll turn into a much bigger thing in future MCU movies. But in the comics, going way, way back, Franklin Richards and Galactus have had a long, long history together. Mostly because Franklin Richards is so powerful. He is like a top-tier reality warper, like beyond Scarlet Witch almost. His main ability is creating entire universes. That's why some people say he is basically like one of the most powerful Marvel characters ever. It's part of the reason why Galactus became so obsessed with him. Like he's afraid of Franklin Richards and Galactus is afraid of almost nothing. As he becomes older, Franklin becomes more powerful. Eventually, he becomes so powerful that Galactus winds up becoming his herald. That's usually what most people think of when they think of Galactus and Franklin Richards together. To me, my Galactus. There was even an alternate universe version of Franklin Richards that became a version of Galactus. And getting to the whole multiverse of it all, a lot of people wondering why would they do this Fantastic Four movie in an alternate universe and not in the MCU. There are a couple reasons for that, mostly to get around some logic issues, but also so that they can probably, early theory, show what it looks like when Galactus actually does destroy the Earth. What they could also do is in the original Galactus story, when he first showed up, they used the ultimate nullifier to get him to back off, like, we'll use this on you if you don't leave Earth, which he eventually does because it's so powerful. They might wind up replacing that idea with Franklin Richards, like Franklin is the very powerful weapon that he senses that he's afraid of. Generally, most of the stories that involve Franklin Richards in a really big way, like when he becomes a big twist in the story, are super bonkers. So in the movie, Galactus might just sense how critical Franklin Richards is to his future existence. But if you look at this Future Foundation teaser that Marvel dropped with the comics is telling you to read, notice it starts with Fantastic Four number one from the 1960s. That's pretty easy, probably just to give you the basic vibe of the team. Also because the movie at least starts with them during this time period in the 60s in their alternate universe. Generally, I think one of the reasons they're doing that is so the movie feels very different, like it'll have a very retro 60s look. I think they're using a lot of futurism too. Like if you remember what their vision of the future would look like back in the 60s, like this is what things will look like in the distant future. It will look like that on their Earth. Then they tell you to read the obvious Coming of Galactus arc, Fantastic Four number 48 through 50, where the Fantastic Four meets the Watcher Uatu for the first time. They meet Silver Surfer for the first time. He shows up to Earth, reveals that he's the Herald of Galactus, explains that it is his job to find energy-rich worlds for him to feed on, which he then comes to do. One of the funny things about that story, too, is that the Galactus storyline actually starts out being an Inhumans storyline. For those of you that want to see more Inhumans stuff happening inside the MCU. I don't know if we're going to see any Inhuman stuff happening during this new Fantastic Four. It's in an alternate universe, so they could do all the Inhumans they want without having to trample on traditional MCU main universe continuity. They kind of did that during Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Like, oh, here, look, it's Black Bolt in a comic book accurate suit. Marvel's version of this Galactus arc from the comics will change a lot, though, for the movie. They kind of adapted a version of that for the original Fantastic Four movie Silver Surfer plot. If you remember that second movie, basically Silver Surfer winds up turning against Galactus and helping the Fantastic Four. That's kind of the way things went down in the original comic book Galactus arc. I did a video about this a while ago, but they announced that there was going to be another version of Silver Surfer from the comics, the Shala Ball version from an alternate universe. Like the movie's in an alternate universe, so it makes sense that they would have an alternate reality version of Silver Surfer who's not Norrin Rad. But apparently there were a couple scoopers claiming that Norrin Rad would also be in the movie, so Silver Surfer, the original Silver Surfer, will also be in the movie in some way too. My early theory about why they weren't having Norrin Rad be the main herald of Galactus in this new Fantastic Four movie was so that they could save the character for a future MCU movie, like they wouldn't kill him off in the movie if they're going to really kill that Earth and they'll wind up in the MCU by the end of the movie. When it comes to Avengers Secret Wars, though, like all of this multiverse stuff, all bets are off. Like literally any character can do anything. And because it's multiverse, it's really hard to pin stuff down. Generally, though, this is all leading up to a big reboot at Marvel after Secret Wars, like just generally simplifying everything. Kevin Feige sort of doing a little nip tuck with all the Marvel movies and all the continuity to make it streamline going forward after this. Here's the thing, though, just because they're rebooting at Marvel, though, some stuff from before will stick around, like some of the new characters that they've introduced will stick around, but they'll just change their backstories a little bit so it all makes sense and why everybody's always been on the same Earth this whole time going into Marvel Phase 7. 
But I think they do have a lot of plans for a lot of new Fantastic Four stories and a lot of new X-Men mutant-based stories, too. Like, we have X-Men 97. It's really been popping off. Like, it's actually been some really solid Marvel storytelling. Generally, Deadpool and Wolverine is sort of meant to be a taste of X-Men doing MCU-related stuff. But I think Marvel Phase 7 going forward, they will start a mutant saga. Like, you've probably seen this going around the internet for a while. All the people that have been making X-Men 97 episodes, like the writers, the producers, have also talked about doing some animated movies too. So everybody let me know in the comments, if Marvel starts doing more traditional animated movies, like in the vein of Spider-Verse, not multiverse movies, but just movies that are animated to look kind of like Spider-Verse animation. If they have access to all their characters, like X-Men, Avengers, Fantastic Four, all at the same time, what kind of animated movies do you want them to adapt in the future? There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. My full X-Men 97 episode 7 video will post next week after they release it. If you have any special requests for anything, just write it below in the comments too. Everybody click here for my X-Men 97 episode 6 video and click here for that new X-Men Captain America trailer that they just released too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.